Hello everyone, I'm Rupert Vandervel, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new book that I'm sure will be of interest to many of you out there, as it celebrates the life of a popular and highly influential photographer, and one that has certainly been a big influence on my work, and continues to be. Saul Leiter, The Centennial Retrospective, is published by Thames and Hudson, who have an impressive library of books on photography. This new publication is a hardback measuring about 10 by 12 inches in size. It's a weighty tome with 352 pages and 340 illustrations, many of which I personally haven't seen before. The cover is printed on a fine textured paper and is wrapped in a sort of half dust jacket featuring one of Saul Leiter's most iconic images on the front and an early self-portrait on the back. I thought it a little odd on first sight the way the name has been split on the cover. But on removing the dust jacket, all is revealed. Lighter, Lita, Leader, Lita, Lighter. This is a letterhead that was used by Saul Leiter in the 1960s and 70s that presents various misspellings and mispronunciations of his name. It's a really nice touch, I love it. The description to the book nicely details what you're getting between the covers and mentions that Saul Leiter photographed and painted nearly every day for over 60 years, amassing an enormous archive most of which remained unseen during his lifetime. Finding inspiration within a few blocks of his apartment in Lower Manhattan, he was a master at discovering beauty in the most ordinary places. It goes on to say that created in collaboration with the Saul Leiter Foundation, this definitive monograph brings together his diverse yet interconnected bodies of work, those being his street photography, his paintings, his fashion photography, and his intimate portraits. The book's authors are Marjeet Erb, who is founder and director of the Saul Leiter Foundation, and Michael Perillo, who is the associate director. The book is divided up into five chapters. Beginnings, on the street, fashion, painting, and intimate views, with an essay supporting each one. One of the first street images we see here, taken in 1958, is one I featured in my top 10 street pictures of all time video, which you can find on the channel. Some nice early pictures of Saul Leiter here, and an introduction written by Michael Perillo with an overview of the book's purpose. The first chapter tells the story of Saul's early years and family life, describing his father as a renowned Orthodox rabbi and legal expert. This page shows the generation of rabbis on the paternal side of his family. It was decided that the young Saul Leiter would study to become a rabbi, and he turned out to be a good student, putting in long hours of study. However, he became captivated by art and began painting and drawing. And before long, and thankfully for us, his mother gave him the camera that he'd been begging for. These are images of his sister Deborah, who was Saul's first model. The Leiter family here in 1942, and on the right here, one of his first impressionistic photographs, where you can see his star beginning to emerge. Saul with his parents in 1944, he attended the University of Pittsburgh in 1941, but dropped out after one semester. But he spent hours alone in the library, educating himself in art history. The bottom image here shows a flyer for an exhibition of his early paintings and drawings in Cleveland, Ohio. During the exhibition, he sold a piece to the composer John Cage and the dancer Merce Cunningham. Later, he would reconnect and photograph them. These pages talk about his early experiments and his move towards photography and the cementing of his desire to be a photographer after seeing an exhibition of Henri Cartier-Bresson's work at the Museum of Modern Art in 1947. I love this early reflected self-portrait, a taste of things to come, and this image which was one of his first colour pictures. Now we're into the second chapter, and for me the main attraction, on the street. I'm not going to show all of the pages in this video, just a selection, because I always think it's nice when buying a photography book to discover things for yourself. An affectionate essay from Adam Harrison Levy, which helps to give a good insight into the character of Saul Leiter. The book is printed on very good quality semi-gloss paper with a decent thickness. The pictures start with some early black and white, and although they are not presented chronologically, they are nicely paired and laid out with space given generously to the most impactful. The colours have been well produced and were able to appreciate Leiter's palette and the use of his favourite colours such as yellows and reds. I've always liked the muted tones in his colour work, as well as the images where the brighter ones pop a little. <music> 
Leiter was a master at framing and were treated to a fine selection of images that illustrate his techniques in this book. I love this image here of an accident, with the victim neatly framed in the centre of the image between some onlookers. Amongst the classic reflection images, there are a few that are new to me, which is a nice surprise. Some of the plates are undated, giving a little mystery to their origins, but I think it's safe to say they were probably taken in his favourite neighbourhood surroundings. Saul Leiter wasn't a man who was particularly interested in travel, although when he did travel, such as to Paris, he certainly made the most of it. Here are some examples of how the great artists influenced his work. He admired the work of Edouard Vuillard and Pierre Bonnard, amongst others. Nice to see some contact sheets too. I love this frame, taken in 1960. Great use of a foreground element. This too, focusing on the pull cord, using a mundane object to bring extra interest to the composition. The car window is another terrific framing device. See how your eye is immediately pulled towards the dog. Genius. I love the use of things such as the window lettering here to help obscure people's identities. It brings some tension to the scene which I like. The chapter on fashion photography shows that he did quite a bit of it in the late 1950s and early 60s, much of it for Harper's Bazaar magazine. These pictures feel like moments caught in his familiar style, rather than posed images. I worked for Vogue magazine at their famous offices in Hanover Square in London for many years as both photographer and video producer. So the anecdote included here by Vogue stylist and former model Grace Coddington made me smile. She recalled a shoot with Leiter and I quote, He famously used a long lens and specialised in fashion photographs that felt uncannily like reportage. After dressing in Vogue studios, I was told to go out into the adjacent Hanover Square where he was waiting for me. After walking around the square several times, I went back into the dressing room, distraught at having somehow missed him, only to be told that Mr Leiter was very happy with the picture he had taken. The chapter on painting shows how closely linked his artworks are with his photography. The essay talks about his time with Soames Bantry, herself an artist, who shared his life painting together in his apartment studio in New York. The colours, composition, moods and abstract nature of his paintings are clearly influenced by what he saw on the streets. The fifth chapter, Intimate Views, is an in-depth look at his pictures of nudes and more personal moments with the people who were close to him. I love this chapter as it's fascinating to contrast these images with the street work we know so well. There are shots that border on eroticism, but also images of more domestic scenes and pure beauty. The book finishes with a nice chronology summarising the hundred years since his birth. Saul Leiter is quoted as saying, I'm a romantic, not a realist. I look at the most unimportant things in life and find beauty in them. Well, Saul Leiter, the centennial retrospective, lays out his life and work in great style and I can highly recommend it. It's hard to criticise a book that goes so deeply into an artist's life and work. It's not cheap at around £60, but you do get an awful lot for your money. Instead of spending money on lots of photographic equipment you don't really need, you should be thinking about building a photography book collection that will inspire, inform and entertain you for many years to come. Starting a collection with a book like this on such an important photographer would be the perfect foundation. I have no affiliation, but it's available at a slight discount from the link in the description to the video. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed the review. Check out my own book, Fine Art Street Photography, how to turn the urban environment into dramatic street pictures. Also check out my one-to-one -one tutorial sessions if you want a personal route to improving your street photography. Thanks for watching.